Welcome back to the Mount Man Medical YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Uvalde shooting. Some new information has come out that has kind of gone into the description of how everything went down. Um, and I think there's some things that we can learn from this and some things for us to think about. So hang out. Let's talk about that next. All right, guys, before we get into this video, do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit that like and subscribe button. That's a free way to support me here at the channel. So if you learned something, you got something out of this video, that's a free way to help me out. We're going to talk a little bit about the Uvalde shooting now. This is a school shooting that happened at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas on May 24th. 19 children and two adults were killed uh, by an 18-year-old scumbag who shall remain nameless. It's a difficult thing to, to watch this particular video. I have three small boys myself. And uh, the thought of this idiot coming in and hurting them for no reason whatsoever is infuriating. Um, but I think there's some things that we should pay attention to and think about and uh, some things that we can learn about the so-called systemic failures in the Uvalde shooting. Um, a lot of reports are starting to surface that the officers who were on scene at that um, did not have clear orders and were not as organized as they could be. Things kind of fell apart. Communication was really bad and nobody knew what to do and everybody was just kind of running around. And this is something that happens very often. Uh, unfortunately, these are professionals and this is their job, so they are called out pretty hard for not being able to handle it. But the fact is, this happens. This happens all the time. Uh, these officers were not able to get in and secure the scene as quickly as they needed to in order to save as many lives as possible. Now, one of the things that you're going to see is that when these shootings happen, the police will respond and attempt to neutralize the threat. Until that happens, EMS is staged and on location, but out of the line of fire. They are not allowed to go into the building and help until the scene is safe. They need to be able to do their jobs in a safe environment or they're just going to add to the casualties, right? So they need the officers to get in there and secure the scene. Um, but this will take some time, especially depending on how many shooters there are and how many rooms are in the building that they're trying to search. They have to go through every single room in that building to make sure that they haven't missed a potential threat. And that takes time. Time where casualties are bleeding to death. So this is why I think it is extremely important for all organizations to have trauma kits staged in strategic locations so that they can be used in the event of a man-made or natural catastrophe. I have a strong passion for understanding the medical that goes into an active shooter event. I've done a lot of research into this um, and a lot of thought and uh, conversations have gone into this with uh, industry experts talking about what we can do to turn a bad situation, a school shooting, into not quite as bad situation. What we want to do is we want to try to limit the amount of lives that has been taken. And the only way that we can do that is one, to neutralize the threat, remove the problem, and then two, is to try to repair all of the damage that he's done. His only goal is body count. So our only goal is to try to fix that body count. In this report, you'll see that officers were on scene, but they had so many vehicles clogging up all of the points of entry that the ambulances couldn't get on scene. In fact, they had a couple of helicopters in the air that wanted to land to help get the casualties to a safe location, get them to the hospital, uh, but they weren't allowed to do that because of the breakdown in communication. They didn't know who to talk to and what to say. So what happened is they didn't get used. They just sat up there in the air until the situation got handled and then they went home. This kind of stuff happens all the time. So having trauma kits nearby strong in bleeding control is going to be essential. Now, one of the things that I tend to see the most is when people are preparing for an active shooter situation, they tend to stock a lot of tourniquets. That makes perfect sense. A lot of people understand that bleeding is your primary goal in any trauma event. You have to stop bleeding because that's what will kill you the quickest, and it's usually the easiest and quickest to take care of. But in a shooting, an active shooter situation, the wounding patterns are a lot different. I've talked about this many times on my YouTube channel. 
I'll drop a link to that in the description down below um, so that you can check that out if you're interested. But one of the things that we need to make sure that we're taking away from here is tourniquets are important. We need to have those in our trauma kits, but we also need to have lots of chest seals. If we look at the wounding patterns from the Las Vegas shooting, we had an average of three bullet holes per person per casualty. This means that for each bullet hole, bullet goes in, bullet will probably come out. We need to be able to patch each side of that. So that's one set of chest seals. But we need to remember that each casualty had a minimum or an average number of wounds sitting around three. So that means we need a minimum of six chest seals per person in order to save their lives if we're trying to treat upper chest trauma, which of course we will be. This is why you need to really stock up on chest seals in an active shooter situation. If the police are running in to secure the scene, EMS is not going to be allowed in to take care of people. But if you have pre-staged trauma kits and you happen to be one of those people that is in the area and you can help, you can get that trauma kit and start applying tourniquets and chest seals and save a lot of lives that way. So having pre-staged trauma kits in excellent locations that they can be easily accessed is going to be essential for trying to limit the body count from these active shooter situations. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out and checking out this video on active shooter medicine and the Uvalde school shooting. Um, pretty horrible situation. Um, I think that we can do better in how we prepare for these types of situations. And um, having trauma kits staged in key locations is going to be ideal. You also need to be trained on how to use those trauma kits. So make sure that you head over to mountmanmedical.com. We have a completely free trauma course. If you have somebody, uh, you're a police officer yourself, and you want to get your guys trained up for free, this is a way that you can do it. It's not great. I would prefer to have in-person training, teaching officers how to do all this stuff. But if we don't have it, this is a good stand-in. You can set up a lot of officers, put on the video, and watch the whole video. And then they can practice on each other and learn these skills effectively. And that's better than nothing. Additionally, you might want to check out our Mass Casualty Trauma Kit. This is designed uh, for the event of an active shooter or a natural catastrophe. It's heavy in trauma gear, bleeding control, and of course, chest seals. So if you need any of that stuff, head over to mountainmanmedical.com and check that out. Thanks for hanging out and checking out this video. I appreciate all of you. Don't forget to hit a like and subscribe. That's a free way to support me. I'll catch you guys in the next one.